Hey everybody, um, in the new year, Buckle Guy is giving us a preview of new hardware. Um, this is on their site, but uh, you can see they just came in, I just opened them. I wanted to show you straight out of the package how clean everything is. Um, everything that we get from them, no scratches, no spurs, everything is beautiful. This is all, these are all solid brass. Um, the thing that excites me about these, uh, so there's the trend of using like the mil spec clips, but they're like an inch wide or an inch and a quarter wide. I'll put a picture on the screen here so you know what I'm talking about. What Buckle Guy did was they took those and made them a half inch, but then they also made a, a swivel version. This is the half inch swivel. It has a flat uh, bottom so you can make keychains out of them. This is the 3 8 inch and it has a curved version so you could do something like this. We've been using chain, all the Kaylee's been using chain a ton. Um, you can replace a normal closure with one of these if you want kind of a more of an industrial look. And today we're just going to make a simple keychain using some black rivets, PVD rivets. I thought that would look cool because as the PVD wears down, it's going to wear to brass. Um, but it's not going to be that complicated of a thing where basically, I just wanted to show you guys this piece of hardware because this is something that I've been waiting for someone to do for a long time because the other ones are so bulbous that like when you have an inch and a quarter or one inch wide piece of hardware, there's really only so much you can do with it. With these, we're going to be able to use these for bag straps. We're going to be able to use them for keychains. We're going to be able to use them for a multitude of things. So let's get into just making a very simple uh, key ring and see how it looks. So I have some six ounce black Wicket and Craig here. And all I'm going to do is cut a half inch strip. You can use a strap cutter if you want for this. Um, I just had my knife on hand, so we're doing it the old fashioned way. Then I'm not going to burn, I'm not going to bevel this, but what I am going to do is burnish the back with tokenol because it's going to be a loop, so you're going to feel it. So what I'm going to do is take some tokenol, slick down the back here, and then look for something within reach. We'll use the knife handle to just slick down these threads, these uh, fibers. And remember, there's acrylic resin in tokenol. So obviously this is not ideal because I have a blade in it. So probably take the blade out if you're gonna do it like this. But you don't, glass slickers are nice. Um, anything you have that is wood or metal or whatever will do a great job slicking. Take your cloth and just burnish both sides at once. It's simple, it works, and you're, you continue to burnish the back side as well. I wouldn't do this on natural veg because yeah, tokenol the stains the front. But anything dyed that tokenol won't stain, this is just a really simple, quick way to do this. And if you're like me, I have really big hands, so it's hard to sit here and burnish like this. It also just takes a lot of time. So I'm going to do this until it's feeling pretty dry, which it is now. And now we have a nicely finished back on our nicely finished front. And we're ready to just punch a few half inch ends, install a rivet, and believe it or not, we're done. So what I'll do is I'll tuck my corners down so I know that I'm on either side, and then I'll lift up, and now I know I get a clean cut. Next decision you have to make is we're essentially making a lanyard. You can see the half inch fits perfectly. We're going to fold this over and the whole thing's going to be held together by one rivet. So how long do we want this? I'm going to go pretty, uh, pretty conservative on it. Just make a little single finger, two finger lanyard. So I'm going to mark this just with my fingernail right there. And that is where we want to cut our second round English punch. So, actually we don't need to cut, we want this flat because it's going to be sitting against our flat piece of hardware. So I'm going to cut this flat. Now this is something we haven't talked about a lot. When you're layering pieces of leather on a piece of hardware, your pretty part is going to be obviously this curve, but on your inside, you want that to be the shape of the piece of hardware that it's butting up against so that it lays nice and flat. So for example, were I to be using this piece, what I would actually want to do is do a reverse punch 
so that when it was in the middle, this is a half inch set three eighths, but when it was in the middle, it was sitting on that curve super even, right? So with this one, our layers, we're gonna slide this in. We want our flat putt piece to abut that and we want to make sure that everything is tucked in nice and neat where we want it. I actually think I would like this a little lower or taller. Should we go two rivets or one? Let's go two. We haven't used the black rivets before. So I'm going to go, since we're using really small double cap rivets, they are 9.2 millimeter caps. We're going to give this a little bit more of a sort of industrial look by doing two rivets. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to mark where my rivets are going to land with this pencil here and roughly here. These don't need to be exact. Okay. And we're going to throw a little bit of glue on here. And I only want to glue to here because I don't want this part glued in for where my hardware is going to be. Now we're only adding this glue because we've already burnished everything. If we weren't, if we were going to burnish afterwards, then we wouldn't necessarily need this glue. So with our glue dry, we are going to do our best to line everything up so that our edges are even. Just pop that in there. Now, if you, you might want to be skiving this. You might think, I'm going to skive that down. But don't, because it makes up for the thickness of the piece of hardware. So if you skive it down, you're going to get, kind of get like a weird, you're going to have a little bit of space. But you see how that gives the space needed for this to move around? So do not skive this down. The next thing we need to do is we know we have roughly from here to here to place two rivets. So I'm going to go metric on this one. And we're just going to pick a spacing that looks nice. I'm going to go maybe five mil from the edge. Maybe a little bit more, maybe seven mil in. Put a rivet. And then another mil, or another centimeter, and put a rivet. I'm going to take my rotary punch, and I'm going to pick the hole it closest fits the post of my rivet. Now there's a lot of room there. However, I think in the next one, it's a little small. Now you can you can you go a little small if you want, but I always like a little bit of wiggle room. So I'm gonna go with this size four here. This is CS Osborne rotary punch. It is literally 16 or 17 years old. So I do not know if they make them like this anymore. I am going to punch our first hole there our second hole there, and then I'm going to take my rivets and make sure that we're not too close. Now I wanted a tight fit, and that is going to look great. So what we'll do is we'll put our hardware in right where we want it, and we'll mark, you, can, you should be using an awl, for some reason I'm using a pencil. We're going to mark exactly where these holes are on the pieces that we glued down. So you see that's why we glued it down. So when we go in to punch our holes, nothing's moving around and we know everything's going to be exact when we go to set these rivets. It's a simple keychain, but you want to put a little tiny bit of extra care into it for it to be that much nicer. So this is going to be a quick one since these dies are self-centering. One there, one there. And so here we go. Very simple project with a really cool piece of hardware. Um, the PVD, we don't use these enough. These look so sick. Um, and I'm glad I went with the double. Gives it just a little bit extra detail. You can see how we have a little bit of unevenness. But um, if you're going to burnish everything beforehand, doing that glue down is a good way to keep everything. You can go in there and sand it down a little bit too. Um, and the nice thing about these clips is not only do they swivel, they also have a hole here for you to attach other things and 
there are really good sort of quick release mechanisms. So boat keys, keys to cars you don't drive a lot, keys to rentals, whatever. This is a really good option for that. Um, I'm just happy someone made these in a smaller size because the big size I always wanted to use, but it was always so big. So, uh, so that's going to be it for this one. Simple keychain video. Um, check the link in the description if you want to pick some of these up. They have them in, I think they did all their colors, brass, antique brass, matte, nickel, PVD black, so you can match the hardware. They also did the standard non-swivel ones in a half inch instead of an inch and a quarter. Um, we're going to pick some of those up too so I can finally use some of them because I do think it's a really cool mill spec piece. Um, that's going to be it. We'll keep it simple. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.